Welcome to the Healthy Mind Podcast. I'm so excited to announce today's guest, which is a father, is a business owner, is a martial artist, is a mentor, and he is the founder of the IKFF, International Kettlebell and Fitness Institute. So I'm so honored to have him here today. Please welcome Steve Cotta. I'm great. How are you? Yeah, good, good. So first of all, it's just checking out that everyone is, is nice and healthy. Of course. How is the situation in California? I assume it's similar to the whole world by now. We know, we yeah. know that stress response has physiological impact. Absolutely. On the- That's one of the biggest, uh, the biggest thing. Even uh, I was like, I'm connecting with you because I know like other people like with Guido and other health professionals that it, what we do is really holistic and is really to help people. So my point of view on putting these people together is um, to rise more the voice of the health side using, of course, the fitness industry, but to let people exactly what you were talking about, how can they react to what's happening because we are all on the same boat. Uh, but some people panic, some people they got the wrong information, trust, lots of people they got a lot of confusion because there is too much information from media. But it's actually a great opportunity to promote health now more than ever. Because when we put it out there, the movement, it's, it's longevity and everything you practice around the movement. So your meditation, your mindset, your food, the quality of everything we do, it's, it should be not negotiable. If it means that more people are paying attention to sort of fundamental hygiene, that's certainly a good, good result. Um, you know, yes. Yeah, so, even in terms of food, like for example, for me and my yeah. family, and to my students, my clients, I'm always promote really good quality food because you know people say organic. Oh, Italiano. Italiano. I mean, yeah, Italiano. I used to, I, I used to, to understand. Mm-hmm. Like I remember still when my grandpa, thirty plus years ago, with a veggie garden, you could pick up a really too much with no pesticides and nothing. So you can pick it up and bite it and you don't need to season it and there was nice flavor, more nutrients, more vitamins, more minerals, everything. And we used to spend more time outside and get more vitamin D. And uh, we used to follow more the season than now even in Italy there is no more season. It's cold and hot and warm and you don't even understand where you are. Um, so there is a lot of mess up. We need to take care much more about our health and the choice that we make in terms of food and exercise and everything more than ever. And then lots of people say like, oh, I can't afford this, I can't afford that. I say, it's not a matter of affording something, it's a matter of what is your priority. Because usually the same people that they cannot afford something that is healthy, uh, they can afford the latest mobile phone. They can afford the fancy car. They can afford a bigger house uh, or more devices inside the house. It's, what is your priority? The common factors, what you're talking about, you're talking about values, right? Like, so the, the value is why we maybe can afford an expensive phone, but we can't afford to eat real food. Um, you know, so ultimately, it's a value, as you said, a priority. And on a bigger picture, it's all about values because the society with which that we have lived in and grown up in and believed in, it's being shaken to its core. And, and on the other side of that, we have the opportunity to create an entire new story, uh, an entire new civilization And there is no victories without losses in life, not in sport, not in relationship, not in business, and not in anything that's worthwhile. So embracing the difficulty, embracing the discomfort, uh, at the fundamental level, it becomes about the self-discipline and the self 
practice, the personal practice. There is no perfect programs. What you said at the beginning, I agree. If, if you're working in the fitness, it's, you know, fitness is a component of something bigger. We, we can talk about health as fitness being an important part of health, but not the only part because someone can be quote unquote fit and be very far from healthy. Absolutely. I agree. That's what I preach every day. Yeah. What's the metric? Is it, is it how fast, how heavy, you know, a certain look. Um, so that's one metric. My metric is very simple. Usually what I tell people is I don't really care. Not that they don't care, but it's not the first metric or priority, the way you look, but it's more about the way you feel. So if you feel good because all the other important things that balance your lifestyle, they really good and you take care of them, uh, the way you look, it could be simply as a consequence of how you balance. Like if you want to be more an athlete, of course, you will balance even more your training session and as well as the fuel that you have in your body. You take care about your sleep and the water that you drink and the quality of the products. So my metric is the feeling. How do you feel? Because I got a lots of no, colleagues. Well, it is a metric. Uh, feel, look, look, feel is a metric, but it goes, it goes into the, the way that we educate and the way that we think because like who, who determines who's beautiful, who determines who's beautiful, who's it's not really beautiful. personal. Yes. And so it's about loving oneself and respecting, you know, the respect grows, respect can be earned, but loving that's free. Okay. So you loving oneself and then from there it's forgive, forgiving, forgiving because, you know, and so that's a starting point more so than looking in the mirror. We're going to reflect out what we see. If we, if we're taught that we're ugly, if we're taught that we're less because you don't fit into this box or this idea and, and, you know, the majority is saying it's this, so then it's this. Well, you know what? Like, be beautiful. Be beautiful in who you are and love yourself in who you are. Big, short, tall. It, my metric for physical, it's real simple. There's fight and flight. We have to go to the primitive. Like, we have descended. The people came from the caves and from the trees. And now we're walking around in the cities with smartphones. But we're not different than the human animal from way 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 back and the world we live in now it's only been around less than 100 years our our great grandparents they were all farmers they were you know back then people worked they didn't live in chairs and they didn't have any of that stuff so we haven't had a lot of time to adapt to the rapid changes because the body hasn't changed it's just the environment has changed Yep. And so the primitive is the fight and the flight. That's the movement. So, you know, if your tribe, you have to defend your tribe, you may have to move and you have to find food. So if you live in a garden, you're going to eat fruits and vegetables. And if you live in the ice age, you're going to hunt for any kind of meat because that's all there is. And, you know, hunter gatherers and, and, and all this stuff. So, you know, about exercise, it can be very complicated, but at the end of it, it, the movement is how are you going to use it? So it's for fight or it's for flight, locomotion. Locomotion is movement. And, you know, so the whole bodybuilding and all that, like, who's that for? Because if someone wants to do bodybuilding because they want to make themselves beautiful and they look in the mirror and they like, oh, I, I like how I'm looking and I like, that's fine. Okay, but as far as doing it for someone else's approval, that's what I would the think, time happen. That's a children's game because yeah. you know, like there comes a point in life where I'm not focusing on what this person thinks or what that person thinks. Like everyone is equal as in value, or if you're religious, we're equal under God, however you want to say it, but you know, there's too much requirement of like approval and being, you have to find that within yourself. 
and then you can get along with other people. But but some t- people you can't get along with because we're all different. And yeah. some people are confrontational and, and because they have their insecurities. So I'm, I'm not saying like we have to all be friends all the time. I'm just saying that, you know, there comes a point if you're going to be a leader, you, you have to lead by example. And absolutely. You know, so it doesn't really matter the whole image thing. That's for your own reasons. If, if, if you think you're ugly, you're ugly. And if you think you're beautiful, you're beautiful because you're going to match your behaviors from your dominant thinking, your dominant mind. And, you know, trainers, the best we can do is inspire and motivate because there's no perfect workout. There's no perfect anything will get you so far and then you do it more and then you reach a plateau. And you have to change something to keep, you know, so it, even if I make my money off of kettlebells, I'm not going to lie and say, oh, everybody has to do kettlebells. It's the best. It's the only. Let's see, see, brother. All right. You know, it, it's there's many different paths. All leads. All roads lead to Rome. Yeah, I um, completely, completely uh, agree. And, you know, so anyway, not to get off topic, but we are. We are about fitness, something bigger health, something bigger well-being. And that's where I, where I really want to focus on right now because, yes, we can do our workouts. And that's the body. It also, it's, it's stimulating the, you know, the neuro, the neuro it's factor. It's part of the thing, of the system. Yeah. It's, it's, it's going to change the emotional state through the hormonal response and we feel better. That, that's a part of it. It's the physical education. But where it's leading it's the mind. It's the mind and, and the emotional health and, and the well-being. And that ties into the values because we've been brought up in a civilization where it's about we're being modeled and taught and compared about accumulation, accumulation of material wealth. And that's how we define success. And now people are, are learning out of necessity. There's other values and maybe even more important. So now we look at family and we look at relationships and we look at education and self-development. There's a lot of ways that we can utilize the time. And it's not just about collecting more or earning more for the sake of it, because we just need money to live, right? It's not. So I think everything's changing. I think we're going to be indoors for a while. And I think it's like we open our eyes and we step into an entirely different world, you know, and I don't really accept the narrative that we're being told, but I'm still being a good citizen and I'm still behaving. I'm staying inside and I'm, you know, washing my hands and I'm social distancing because I could be wrong about some of my thoughts too. Like, I don't care about being right or wrong about I used to follow the really rules happening. of the citizen. Like what's really happening, I don't know. I know what, what I'm hearing, and I don't think any of us know, you know, but actually I don't really care that much what the truth is because it's where it's all going. And right now it's difficult. And you know, God is good. So good overcomes evil, <laughs> you know, and so there's really nothing to fear. And but it is a time where we have to learn to be more self-disciplined, more respectful, less wasteful, uh, more respectful to each other, but also to the earth, to the animals. And, you know, the economic system is not sustainable. And, you know, unfortunately, even though we're all going to struggle to different degrees, Unfortunately, it's inevitable that the system is not going to survive. And, you know, that's a part of what's going on, too, because everyone can talk about, oh, this this virus and you're reading the stats and worried about it. But also (laughs) unemployment and these other factors and, you know, who's going to pay for health care and, you know, different countries have different health. U.S. doesn't have a good health care system, right, as far as. Um, you know, so, um, there's a also lot of people fact- are in trouble. Yeah, it is. It is. And it's like, so we have to come together as it, like, 
no one's talking about the homeless people. And they did a story. This is just one example, but they did a story, you know, a week ago or 10 days ago where they found in Los Angeles, which has a massive homeless population, they found the first two, you know, uh, patient zero for the homeless population in LA, right? They found people that had the virus and then the articles about, oh, we're concerned. But if you think about it, that should have been your first concern at the very beginning. Like that would be the obvious, of course, the people that are most susceptible that are, you know, have the least options and, you know, the hygiene is the worst. Of course, that would be the first point rather than the after point. But that just goes to show how the system, there's too much corruption and, and wrong focus. N not to be negative because as health professionals, we have to be positive, inspire. But I believe, you know, really, this is a strong opportunity for humanity, as fitness professional. Um, cause we all do our part and we are leaders and the martial artists, you know, it's like somebody has got to lead if people don't know what to do, if everyone's confused, right? Like who's going to lead is those who are capable. And it's not an anarchy where we're rushing out onto the streets and, you know, it's like Mad Max that was from Australia though. So, I mean, <laughs> no, but seriously, um, you know, it's not that and we don't want it to be that. <laughs> yep. but it does well of course the more training the better that you have you know you know but but really what we want is we want humanity to wake up and to stop being so self-centered and focusing only on what what you want because we've got so soft and you know the world for our grandchildren is going to be a better world and we have to fight for that you know, we have to fight so that because there's a lot of a lot of things with the status quo that aren't OK, that haven't been OK for a long time. It, you know, and um, I'm not saying I have, you know, very many answers. I, I just know the things that I know about. But I'm a student. I'm always studying. I'm always open to learning and, and trying to understand things. And um. You know, but this is an opportunity because now if it's not about the money because, well, it's not moving, right? If, if the money's not moving, even if you have a certain amount, yes, okay, logically, the more you have saved up, if things kind of go south, then the longer you can hold out. But at that point, it's just, you know, you're not really, you have more or less, you still don't have an unlimited supply to where you're going to be able to hold out forever. You know, even if you're, even if you got a nice house and a good job and you're, you know, you're, you're online and you're making money, that's fine. You know, that's going to happen anyway, right? We're, we're being digitized. So sooner or later, everybody's going to be connected. <laughs> Which I'm already missing the human contact, but yeah, that's the way to go right now. Yeah. We haven't figured that out yet. That's the, why we have these challenges because the integration, like, is it a war or what? Or is it a marriage? Because is it, oh, the machine takes over and now we are slaves, which is a one paradigm. And there's smart people and there's thought leaders that have that fear, <laughs> actually. And that's why some of them want to go to Mars and they want to go away because they've given up on, you know. And there's other people that say, well, you know, there's the majority doesn't want to think about any of it or talk about it because it's too much brain power and it stresses them out. And that's fine. You know, not everyone can, has the capacity to handle certain data, right? Cause it's like we're computers and you're processing. And if you get like information overload, you can <laughs> short circuit and people are like that too. So, you know, I can't go too deep with the conversation, but the point being is, is what we can do right now at home is we can reprioritize a lot of the belief systems and how we go about, and it starts with ourselves and then it extends into how we treat others and the recognition that we are cells in one body. We are all connected. We are all related, if you want to call it that, really. And, you know, um, the differences are just appearances. They're not major differences they're just individualities but 
at the fundamental level, we are all more similar than different. And we have to stop being divided because when you're divided, you're easy to conquer. And, you know, I want to see that, you know, because the alternative, if we don't learn that, the alternative is every person for themselves. And that's a step backwards. It's not a step forwards. <laughs> you know, and it's a great opportunity what we have. And I actually really grateful for this conversation because first of all, um, like we never talk live together. So always been following you even through video, but it's good to know that as a person first, you have such a deep value because they are in line of what I'm trying to put together and what I do for since years and years and years. And now more than ever, like starting from us as leaders, but then find a way in the channel to educate other people to do the same. Because there are lots of people, they have no idea what we're talking about. For us, is a time to reflect and get even better. For lots of people, it's time of confusion and they really don't know what to do. And We're here to help. We are here to help each other. And, and that's what you're about. And, and I'm very grateful that you, that you asked me to talk with, with you and your, your people, you know, our people, really. Yeah, because, because I'm connecting with, uh, not, I'm, I'm not just connecting with people just because you have a voice in the fitness industry. I really go deep in values that people have. It really, it's really important. I completely agree. And, yeah, I, I'm, I'm happy to see that you're doing that. And I'm completely on board because we do need inspiration. And the only way forward is through honesty. And we, we share what we understand and we share what we have practiced and we have studied. It, it's not, for me, it's never been. It's not about the market share because the whole planet is the market. And if you can help someone, that is the service. And the individuals can decide the value for themselves. Yeah. You know, and of course, our economic system that we've lived within, it doesn't work exactly that way. It's, it's a paper money, a fiat currency. And, you know, actually, there's a saying. In every language, you know, in English, it says, follow the money. But we all have that saying, and there's truth to that. And, you know, when we don't understand things, <laughs> if we can understand the money trail, then we can get to the bottom of all of it. <laughs> it's a difference between values, because we're brought up to value money. And what you and I are speaking about, and what we believe in is that you value the value itself. It, there's actually an opportunity that we get to value other things besides money just because there's no other choice for a lot of people, for most people. And that's going to be really good for the future because we want a society where we can treat each other with love and respect, where we pay for value versus for status or for appearance or you know, and of course, we need to have progressive leaders. If we're going to have political systems, we have to have individuals that are progressing alongside consciousness of the human race that are able to represent that. And, and if those people are not able to make it to the highest levels, then there's no reason for the governments to continue to exist. Because if we don't have, this is the time where you know, there's people, especially like not, not everyone's concerned about their own country, right? So if you're Italian, you're like, oh, Italians and if you're Australian, you're Latin American. But the reality is it's all for one and one for all. And it's the globe. It's not your country. The, the whole thing about countries and nations, it's such an outdated concept that doesn't serve reality. It doesn't serve, you know, it's a global. It's it should a global. be just a difference in demographics, but not 
in of course, Bali. Because we come from different tribes, you know, but and different regions. But you know, the way that we move about, we're not restricted like we were thousands of years ago, where we didn't have you know high speed bullet trains and planes, and 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 it's only going to be more, right? Because our planes are are going to go faster in the future, you know, you know, and all of that. So, and that's you know, all the point. I, that's all the point. Because we have, to we have to integrate with the technology, and there needs to be a distribution that is human. I'm not. I, I'm not. I don't believe in the communism, or the, or the, I don't believe. I believe that certain people deserve more because they contribute more. Yeah. You know. So the free enterprise idea, but it's not operating in a way that you know there should not be homeless people, especially in a place like U.S. that has such a massive you know gdp and you know the uh i think denmark the denmark or it might be finland or, or maybe both but scandinavia is you know the most progressive in a lot of things in, in in terms of socially and you know they have an index now where it's a happiness index and you know countries use like gross domestic product and gnp and gdp and you know as like a, a measure of your economic you know so the higher the the gdp the 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 richer the country is right but it's such a limited way of thinking and living because if that is if you're rich based on a number versus your life like if you're rich it's because you have a rich life so what's you know and so in the future, we're going to have the ability that we're going to be able to exchange value without this third hand coming in that is corrupted. That's like, oh, you got to use my money. Then I own the money and it's debt. So you're taking debt to pay a debt, right? And that's how it gets all messed up. But there's no gold standard. You know, a long time ago, it was gold and, and silver okay, and stuff. In, and in your language, what I would love to do is make more people rich in the other way yes of course because you don't need very much of the material when you have the ability to create and and the system is set up to where the technology is working in favor right it's creature comfort so of course we don't live in trees and caves and of course we like to have soft you know or or firm you know comfortable bed we don't sleep on the floor and nobody would right if you give the opportunity and yet we have all this wealth and you know it's not where it needs to be for the people in the way that it could be and you know so it's about distribution and 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 you know the way forward is that we become empowered as individuals through the use of the mind and understanding and also recognizing that we are all connected. It's not about, oh, I'm this, I'm that, because it's a shared experience. And me becomes we, right? Because it's it's math. It's all about the math and the numbers. The numbers is the math. And that's the hidden component, the hidden geometry. Like we get too much focused on the word and forget that the word it's a vibration, you know, and so we actually create the world that we have through our habits and you have to change the mind to change the behavior. And this is a time for us to change behaviors. Like when we go back on the street and start interacting with ourselves again, you know, how are we going to behave? And certain things have to change for sure yeah you have to see less parents at the restaurant with giving ipads and iphone to the kids because at least they stay quiet i would love to go back in time when you actually you know even my kids they go and they socialize with the older people on the side and they start to throw them something it's it's normal uh, movement I mean, culture yeah so yes. it's more uh, socializing, interaction, and, and movement rather than isolation. That's what's happening. So it's a great opportunity for us. And uh, again, I'm really grateful for this conversation because being in the same philosophy, imagine if we get, I don't know, five, six, ten people like us 
but with different experience, but same philosophy. Different. We have thousands. There are thousands. We, exactly. We're so, all coming together now because the world requires, and exactly. you know, we are we are soldiers for good, and you know, the Mother Earth has been abused, and now it's time for. It's time for the warriors for good to cooperate, to fight the good fight, to protect the mother and all the mothers, the mother earth and all the mothers, because those are our, our sisters, our daughters, our wives, our girlfriends, you know, and that's this mindset of domination is going away now because now we have to learn to be more humble and grateful and stop living as if we are conquerors to conquer. This was something that transformed humanity. And now the, listen, you or I, we don't really, we don't get to write it. We're a part of it. And the earth and the cosmos, it moves at its own cycle. And, the earth is cycling right now and we don't may or may not even see it. Most people may not even be aware of it, but the best thing we can all do is to look inward and feel what is occurring and maintain a very strong focus that we are ushering in a new era of it's more kindness. It's more kindness and it's more harmony. And, you know, all these problems that we perceive, those things are going to be dissolved. You know, so it's, it's all good. It's very good. And yet it is, there is some darkness right now. There is some darkness and we all feel it. And, and so it's easy to be depressed. It's easy to feel overwhelmed. Every person should ask themselves what they believe in and, and ask yourself this question in the battle of good and evil. What side are you on? Because that's what I say, you know, because I'm on the side for good. I'm on the side for peace and love, you know, and I don't want to have to defend myself any longer. You know what I mean? I don't want to have to keep fighting like I will. If I have to, because I'm a peaceful person, but if some, if you're peaceful and someone tries to, you know, push themselves upon you, then you have a choice. You either run, you hide, or you have to fight. You know what I'm saying? So it's like we, we fight the good fight and you know, the, the, all the strong guys and fitness. And if you, if you really think you're strong. Use your strength to help others that are not as strong as you, because that's the true test of strength. It's not about your how big your arm or how much you can lift, or you know, because whatever I your PR in is, unity and cooperation. That PR is never going to get higher. You're going to get it as high as it's going to get, and then you're only going to go down from there. So, you know, the physical body. It's all of us get old, and all of us, you know, get hurt and can get sick and all that you you can't just hold on to the identity of the the physical without also cultivating the the spirit and the soul that connects us to the greater powers which which you know is eternal and there's so much that is unseen <laughs> that was, and what you don't see is the most important thing it is the invisible it's the silent power and yeah. that's the power of the woman that's the yin you know, and, and for a long time, we've been too much focused on the expansion and growth and, you know, conquering and taking on new lands and taking on, you know, an, an accumulation of resources. And you can't just ignore forever. You know, the earth's been crying out. We're like, oh, there's more oil. You know, there's more gold. There's more profit. It's just, you know, and short sighted. It's, ego short-sighted just thinking about now thinking yeah, that about is not a long-term health uh, vision we have to serve we have to serve humanity and serve each other serve ourselves but do it in a way that you know like 
can't hold on too tight to this reality because this is all temporary. And even the greatest love that we can know, even that, like in the body, like your 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 parent, your loved ones, your pets, we all we live and we die and we cycle. And you know, there is no such thing as going through life without having losses without having and it's how we handle ourselves in the crisis to stay calm to breathe to just stay calm breathe and know and trust that there's a great intelligence that is working in our favor right now and the only thing we need to do is not get in our own way by freaking out and panicking and acting crazy. And we stay and calm. That's what a lot of people do. That's why, like, my point is to do com something completely different or how everyone is reacting. Everyone is reacting like, oh, we all have a business that we cannot operate it. Let's put a lot of exercise online and get them for free. And then hopefully we get some clients. And But where is the value the there? Time for service. This is not the time for market share. And if you're exactly. thinking that way, people are going to remember. And if you're trying, if this is, it, it is an opportunity, but the opportunity is with you in your own growth. It's not exactly. the opportunity to take. And you know what I mean? So tomorrow I have a new program launching a free, um, I'll send you the information when it launches tomorrow. You're more than welcome to share it. And you know, we all can do our, our parts and, and what you're doing here. This is great, you know, and I, and you know, cause, cause we all have the same challenge and it's, you know, some of us are going to figure out and we can hustle and, and this and that, but that's a short, short, short term. The longer term is, is we have to metamorphosize society and a lot of it, like we have to really be disciplined in what we, even talk about and think about and read and share because we become like the media and we become a factory for the distribution of negativity and doom and gloom by, you know what I mean? And it's like, there is going to come a point where probably things will go dark. Maybe tomorrow, who knows? We'll see. But there's going to come a point where what if this is what if, what if internet and phone, everything goes down for a period of time? Yeah. Exactly. Right? So, you know, it's nice to have this opportunity, you know, but none, we can't take for granted any of the things. <laughs> yeah, no, this is, but as you said, if you work on your value first, then you figure it out to find some solution even with not technology, how to impact the people around you. Yes, because we need, we need, because all of us, the strong sometimes can be weak and is weak. And, you know, that the one who overcomes the greatest obstacles also has tremendous pain. And the great stories of redemption are those that have the greatest pain, of course. And that's why we relate and we admire and, and we feel inspiration of that when they overcome and they share the struggle. And, you know, so it's time to put down the mirage of and, and be true. Every person be true to who they are and see the good, see the good, because if we think it's not good, like, yes, there's lots of things that we can all improve. You know, I spent most of this conversation expressing that I'm not satisfied with a lot of things. But at the same time, if we look back, you know. 70 years ago we, we have a much better day-to-day -day existence <laughs> or, or 50 years ago you know what i mean like we have the luxuries of creature comforts that we don't have to break our backs most yeah. of us now you know and so life actually does get better but we're impatient and it doesn't get better fast enough and it moves at a pace that we don't see it so we only can see it when we look back in time and oh, okay, yeah, I guess we have progressed because you know now we have this, this, and this. And before, you know, before if you were a certain color or whatever, you were 
you know, in a cage maybe. Who knows, right? Yeah, so, but it could be a progression regression. It is regression because there's a hidden component that nobody talks about. There's 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 prisoners, there's human trafficking that goes on massively throughout, you yeah. know, and and, I was and, talking and, last night with my partner, and uh, I said, like, sometimes I will be really sad if my kids, they can never experience some of the things that I did, because they were really valuable things, not material stuff. Things that we don't have pictures and movies or, you know, uh, uh, everything is our mind, and nothing will cancel that, delight it. It's uh, it's something like even going out with nothing and running on the tree and looking for friends, not texting them and all this stuff that was creating more emotion of us, inside us, that we had to spend time and invest time to maybe walk or run up an hour just to see if your friend was at home. And, and yeah, this yeah. was showing appreciation because if you have to spend all that time to get there and maybe not even find them and go back home, it was an hour for nothing. And now we think differently. Say, okay, I text, I call him. If he's not available, I'm not going to waste my time. But it's actually proving caring for something or for someone. Do you want to be there? Are you invest your time, which is one of the most precious things that now we are craving for that because we don't have enough. And we still have the same 24 hours. We just, We're finding uh, our balance. This is going to help us find our balance. And, you know, a balanced humanity is a force for good, for sure. And, and, and you know, ultimately, uh, integration between, you know, human humanity, technology, between nature and, you know, technology. And um, it's the, the cities of the future will be integrated. And, you know... Um, Media has a lot of power and media, you know, of course, this is a form of media, but in terms of mass media, I think it's been, uh, it kind of leaves a lot of people in a spell and it, it's, it's too impactful in how it shapes the views, uh, especially with young people. But, you know, most of us, we, we, we all to different degrees grew up, you know, watching TV and watching these programs and pop culture re relations of characters and you know, I'm not saying it's all bad. It's a tremendous media, but uh, for, you know, creativity. But at the same time, there needs to be a balance and an integration where we can switch off. And, you know, many people around the world never switched off. They, they're always on something, entertainment. And, you know, long ago, you know, Nero, Long ago in ancient Rome, he said, you know, the pane is uh, uh, bread and circus, right? Bread and circus is like you feed the people and you keep them entertained and they just, you know, they make good workers. Pane and circo. Yeah, yeah, pane circo. So that's how it works and it's worked the same way for a very long time and it still works like that and it's like, you know, Maybe this is an opportunity to break that circuit a little bit and we find entertainment within the mundane and with, you know, our friends and family and, you know, use the technology and use it in ways that enhances the quality of life for more and more and more people. And, you know, I look at it like wherever we're going, after this, if it's like a ship, we don't get to leave until everyone's on board. So if I have that mentality, and that means like I have to care even for the nobody that doesn't benefit me in any way, but I still have to care for that person. Because if I'm at the front and I get on, but I got to wait for the guy at the end to get on, it's better I get off and go to the back and lift him up and then I climb on at the you know what I'm saying that's what the yeah. strong people need to understand is your greatest blessing is also you know your greatest service in that way so it's it's not a curse it's a blessing but the blessing is not for yourself it's for others
Yeah, that's uh, really, really deep. And uh, I really agree with that. If we can have more each other and help the weaker. Like here in Australia, for example, I don't know if probably in, in US is similar or the same. The biggest thing they worry is mental health after this. Because there are lots of people that they're weak, especially here, and they're going to spend too much time inside, not knowing what to do, and not having a purpose. So they don't know why they exist sometimes. You can imagine how bad it would be the outcome after this. And that's why even with the lots of people, even my clients, they suffer depression, so they feel lonely, and now more than ever. And they spend too much time doing something with not a turn, watching TV or play video games, and this get crazier. And Looking for questions. happy to stay with people like us and get some kind of contact because we keep them on track. They basically yeah. survive. That's responsibility is to be leaders and to, you know, the, the thing is, is that there's a saying and many people, they, they maybe everyone's heard it, but maybe you, you just don't remember or you, you don't take it for its real value. But the saying is, it, there's a saying that love heals all, you know, and it's like the, the little baby, he falls down, cuts his knees, crying, the mom holds him, kisses, he stops crying, right? But a lot of people don't understand the power of love is actually the greatest power in the existence because there's different kinds of powers and forces. We can say good and evil, but that's, that's sort of a biblical way of looking at a you know the other other cultures they talk about the light and darkness or the you know the yin and the yang we, we can say there's negative and positive right polar polar forces and it's not about anything being all good or all bad it's integrated but the point is is that a lot of people they don't understand that love is the most power of any force and in terms of if you were to measure it, it has the highest frequency. And fear, it cannot stand in love. You understand? Fear cannot exist because the love is so powerful. It's like a light. When it's turned on, all the darkness becomes illuminated. And so, but when people, you know, one of the, difficulties is what we are taught about love is we are taught about love in a way that is like Walt Disney, like beauty and the beast and Cinderella. It's a story. That's a fantasy. And you know, that kind of love is not the powerful love that that's just a basic kind of emotion that is equal to the other emotions because that kind of love, it can be given and it can be taken. So it's like, oh, I love you. You're, I, you're nice to me. I love you. And now later, now I don't love you anymore. So now I don't love you. I take, you see, so this kind of love cannot heal. <laughs> this is an emotional love and it's based on like a fantasy that we're told. And it's not a deep love. No, it's not a lasting or permanent. So it's more of a, of a temporary just like when you fall down and you get cut, it hurts for a little while, then it goes away after a while, right? So, but there's the greater love is an energy. It's not an emotion. And so therefore it's not conditional. It's not based upon anything. It just exists in and of itself. And so that's the love of creation. That's the love of like, we all come from that. It's the highest representation of whatever you believe in and whatever name you want to call it. Maybe you don't even need to call it a name. Okay. Because it doesn't need us to name it. It's greater than our human capacity. So like, but, but that energy, it's an energy and it exists. And so when we open to that energy, we all, we don't, we do not need the permission of our parent or the church or the state or the school or the team or anybody. You don't need the permission to have access. There's no hierarchy. 
<laughs> there's no barriers to entry. And when we open ourselves to that, then we can understand that we can forgive ourselves. And then we can be loving to ourselves. And now we have the foundation for everything else because with that, now you can radiate and you can impact everyone that you come into contact with. And when the planet resonates to that level, that frequency, we become the masters of the universe. <laughs> we once were, and we still are, but it's like asking you shall receive. So whatever the dominant thoughts and the dominant behaviors that we are participating in as a collective, that is what we are resonating. And that is what we are, you know, and so that might blow minds, but honestly, we're just, it's a mycelial network. If you look at a chemical level, it's fungus. We're all fungus and we're all, it's all moving through space and we come and go. It's like temporary in the physical form, but there's another part. That's the con consciousness that just, it goes through the threads of time, you know? So that's, that's what I think that we all have the opportunity to practice and if you can't do a push-up or you can't do a kettlebell swing or for some reason you can't do a squat and you can't walk because you're, you know, even if you can barely move your body, you can sit there or you can lay there and you can breathe. You can close your eyes and you can inhale. You can exhale and move the cells and that movement that now we're tapped into, you know, that's meditation right there. There's no dogma. There's no religion or school. It's open to everybody you know there's other techniques i mean i love the wim hof you know the cold yep. shower but again all all techniques are for the use and they're sometimes it's contraindicated every, every technique might be contraindicated in a, in a certain scenario like not every person should do that right and, and there's no technique that everyone not a kettlebell not anything but the one thing that we all can do is we can breathe and, and we must breathe, you know, and, and, you know, I hope for humanity's sake that we go dark for probably not too long. I don't know how long it's going to take. I, I'm not on the inside where I have access to the information, but I'm, I'm just saying, I think that if we go dark, it's going to benefit us because let's just get offline. And now we got to when you're forced to be with yourself and you're forced to look for, and then you stop running and you just look inside and, and you accept yourself as you are and love yourself, that's liberation. And if many of us can do that now, then we come in back to the table with a completely different attitude and our level is higher now. And then we can start, Working faster, working faster, but staying calm, you know, and, and now we're creating the infrastructure in the world that we want. And, you know, it's like, that's not my domain. That's not your domain. You know, maybe I'm, I'm just a fitness guy, whatever, however you want to see me, that's fine. I, I don't claim to be expert in too many things, but at the same time, we don't need to be sitting around and waiting for the Bill Gates or the Elon Musk or the Zuckerberg, or we don't need to wait for those people to come up with some solution to no, fix we the need to find our solution and tap in our community. And my goal is to impact the people around us, whoever they are, with whatever channel we have. Yes. We're, we're, we're on it, brother. We're, we're in it. And you know what? When you take leadership, then you get people supporting that. And I've always believed that. And we're all leaders, but there's a time to lead and there's a time not to lead. And the ego needs to be starved sometimes because if it's just about, oh, we're all leaders and I'm such a leader that I'm insecure because you're a leader, so I can't be in the same space with you or you know what I mean? And and that's not leadership. That's just a weak person in a strong body. Yeah, no, the best relationship that I had and having in my life, even professional life, it's 
we people that they open to be like being an open cup. It doesn't matter how much you know or who you are, it matter how much can you absorb even from the least person, the one that you want to get out of the boat to help it. There is always something to to let you grow as well as a person. It make me feel good when I can help someone else and at the same time see what I can learn from him or her. So that's the main purpose. So despite like rather than everyone else that is just getting crazy and put exercise everywhere, which is important, what I do anyway every single day, but what I will do, do even more right now is Fitness industry is not even appropriate. We are in the health industry. And we can use the exercise of the health industry just as a tool, but to coach and inspire and to educate more people on everything we're talking about in the last hour. That's the yes. reason. There's a need for it. And, you know, I think I don't even personally like the term industry as it relates to what we do because. Industry is a particular business model. It's based on the industrial. Yeah. And my role is not to be at the top of a pyramid. My role is to inspire and to help transformation because ultimately the student becomes the master and we have guides and we have teachers along the way. And if they were a good teacher, you will always remember them because you recognize that they provided you with certain fundamental knowledge, information, and or inspiration that caused a shift in your life that enabled you to become the person that you now are. You know, So teachers are always important, but it's not for the sake of the fame or the shower with recognition because even you know yes as a younger man i was seeking that but now i no longer seek that i've had that you know and you know like it's cool it feels good but it's not about oh i feel good because they're saying nice things it's because the work feels good when you're doing what you're here to do it's it's part of the and it's the definitely call. only when you do it with your heart and with your values the calling, the, the it's purpose. It's not about the knowledge and it's not about, it's, of course, it's part of it, but it's more about and the it's outcome a community. that you have. Yeah. It's a community. I, I don't see the industry because it's like, if you want to talk about fitness industry, that's URSA, you know, that's IDEA, that's these organizations with, you know, the, the worldwide membership and they do the statistics and they're setting the trends and that's the mainstream sort of point of, entry but honestly we live in a world and in, in the fitness space and the fit, physical culture space it's innovation it's innovation and it's individuals and, and you know it's not just the world's different now it's not just going through the same channels it's not just you go to the four year then you become you know this certification and now you're a fellow and you're a you know uh a, a, a professor that's at the, you know, that, that's, that's a particular channel of information, but most of what's the really good stuff out there, it's people that just have put in the time and they have life experience. I don't care about your certification or your degree or, or what group you're a membership of. You might be out of your garage, you know, you're either good or you're not good. And if you're the guys that I listen to, it's what they do is either they know something and they're great at talking or whatever, but I'm not even really that interested in sitting and listening to the research, you know, like I'm not anti-education, but honestly we're, we're physical education and physical means doing, it doesn't mean talking about, yep. you know, so what we're talking about, there's aspects of the mind and the emotion techniques for sure. That's important. For sure, it's important if you need a, a coach to show you the technique of this is how you swing. Okay, to a point. But usually in the olden days, that's childhood. You learn physical education. You learn how you use your body. You can do a push-up. You can do a pull-up. You know how to run. You know how to jump. Those are fundamental skills. You know, 
if you haven't learned that because you've been sitting on on your phone and your computer and now you're working in a in a computer job and so you haven't exercised for 40 years and now you you feel like an old man so you decide you're going to join a gym okay that's a reality for some people i realize that but the point is is that you don't need trainers to just show you the techniques because once you learn it you got to do it and then once you do it now you know it and so now you don't need to keep you know what i'm saying it's so yeah, yeah. the industry like that's why it's corrupt because now i need you to keep buying i need you to keep buying so i got to keep repackaging and changing you know or i got to if you go to a trade show you're going to see the same things every year how many treadmills are there and okay oh the new innovation of the treadmill now we have this special interactive and you can use your fitbit I've seen it. I've seen it 20 years ago. Like, show me something that is going to change how we do things. You know, like Fosbury Flop, you know, it's fundamentally different now. It changes, you know, so like our space is so creative. It's not about the industry. It's about the, the community. It's about the reaching out and interacting with the people. And yes, exercise, that's the entry point. But then beyond that, it's the, you develop the relationship and, and, and again, like not, we're not counselors, but you have the trainers that, that want to start calling themselves life coaches too. Right. Cause they're, they're kind of thinking about the same stuff and they want to figure out how to charge for it. So if you're going to charge for it, well, you got to make up a title, right? You can't call yourself a doctor or you're not a therapist because you got to have a certain license. So, okay, well, I guess I'm a life coach. And that's fine. I'm not, I'm not making fun of it because there's, you know, we're doing that too, but it's just, I'm not calling myself a life coach. We don't do that anyway. We simply coaches, but it's part of our coaching. It's not we share just, yeah, just about exercise. We support people. We create community. Yes. We create connections and we are there when they need us, even outside the gym. That's what we do. Yes. And so those of us that really take it seriously and, and study for years and years and years, we are just as valuable as other professions. Um, you know, preventative health, you can call it that. We are, we are healthcare professionals as well, and it's in preventative. It's not disease medicine, it's health, which means don't get sick and don't break because you have the right knowledge and information and education and you know, so if we are the shepherds to provide that, you know, it's an honor. And and I, I do my part. You do your part. Guido, Esther, they do their part. All your, you know, that's what we're here here for. But I just think we have to change the language that, that we've used and, and stop participating in the other game that is not the same game. Like we have to create. We can create a our way of. Yes. And, and changing the mind because it's like. It's about the interaction and about the people and about the community and the information that goes that. And, you know, um, we're not going to go back to how it was before. And it's like now you go and you got all these food supplements and all, all these protein bars and these protein shakes. And that's what fitness industry is. Yeah, It's, it's protein shakes. Lot. It's protein powders. It's the treadmills. It's the, okay, cool. And, and we, we kind of, some of it we like and some of it don't. But honestly... If, if nothing else, the body weight and the calisthenics, like that shows us that we don't need okay. most of that stuff either, right? I and believe that you were talking about before is reinventing the, the train meal, you know, putting more futures. Yes. So it's exactly yeah. the same because we don't need all the stuff that we have now, but because yes. from the settling point, they say like, okay, we all got it. We have our body. We can move. What can I sell next? And and that's why they develop lots of things in the fitness industry in the wrong way. And the lots of things like even Guido say, I say it, they say the first tool that we should learn how to use it. And most of the time we forget it's our body first. And the lots of young kids and young generations now they don't do it. There are parents come in and say, I want my kid to perform, to perform. Say, okay, let's have a look at the posture. Let's have a look. This is not coordination. They're not able sometimes to move opposite arm and opposite leg. So they can't really run fast. 
So they miss what we we're talking about, the basic skills of locomotion. It's not as obvious, but it's coming back to something bigger, which is the mindset and the way we live and the values we have. If we don't have values for our kids and it's easier to put them in front of TV or, or, or tell them to shut up or because I'm stressed or not going out because you get dirty or you get hurt, we don't let them experience these things that they lead up to actually naturally develop the locomotion skills. So everything we're talking about it is amazing. And we think you find that more people like us and pull condensed pieces and make put it together, it's a really evolution of how people can absorb and learn. And for us, it's going to be great too because uh, if we are good, we can be better. So imagine the energy even between us of inspire each other. Uh, again, it doesn't matter where you are, but everyone has different story, different why, and different pain that we had. Yes. And that's why we do what we do. So more stories and education and also we share between each other. And I think more powerful and positive and the positive impact we can create is going to be even greater. It's the good news media because more of us want to know and understand there's very good and kind and loving people and helpful people that, you know, want to help, that are offering the help. And it's about being aware of that global community. And it's now what's the alternative? You want to turn on the TV and you hear about, oh, this, you know, whatever, this crime or this horrible news. <laughs> or you want to turn on the media and, hey, you're uplifted. You're feeling good. You're, you know, and it's like that, that, that mental switch. We have to have the self-discipline to focus the mind to the progression, even exactly. sometimes when the world around us looks like it's falling apart and it's doom and gloom and oh, it's raining. We have to stay positive because we owe it to the creation and we owe it to the creative process to maintain this. And it is a test. These are all tests in life. Perseverance along with self-discipline is crucial. and. Those of us that are here, we're here because we're the survivors. <laughs> it took me a long time to figure it out how to put in my latest T-shirt what I want to create. And this is simply summarize the message of just create something simple, achievable, and sustainable. That's all. If we can make it simple for others to understand, they can actually do it. They can do it for a long time, so they can sustain that kind of lifestyle, lifestyle forever. Yes. It's not nothing that is a quick fix or some problem. You're going to put the effort in, but if you put a little bit every day, you create that path that you can do it forever, not for the next 12 weeks, not for the next three months, not even for the next five years. You cultivate like your veggie garden. It keeps growing and evolving. Yes, that is our natural condition. In fact, we are animals. Uh, we require, we are dynamic animals. We require movement. It's about dosages, not too much, not too little. We require the right amount. And that's different for each person depending upon the needs. And we require real food. Yes. Clean water, clean air. New, new, uh, nourishing food, not too much, not too little, and movement. And then we we require social interaction. We require... See, in the end, it's uh, pretty simple, the solution. And it's simple. It's simple. And things are become too complex, and we have this opportunity to simplify within our own day, our, our own life, our own family, and we make the best of it. Yeah, that's why it can be sustainable in that way. Keep it simple. Exactly. The Italian people are are, are unique people and, you know, very um, community, very strong, strong friendship, strong uh, 
everything, Aparativo, just they, they make time for each other. And he's built a very strong uh, family. Yeah, that's the most important thing. Yes. And um, I think maybe the same model, it doesn't work the same in a different country. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you, have I, find, it is you have to find the right, the right rhythm for, for where you are. And, and for Italy, it's, it works really great. Yeah. But Dan was, is doing um, a great job on community uh, too, in a different way. But, uh, yeah. He's doing well. Yes. That's All awesome. Right. I'll let you go and I'm looking forward to talk to you next time and then keep growing this amazing group of fantastic people. And uh, I believe we kind of create something uh, in evolution and uh, with a great impact. It's great to be a part of this, Alessandro. We go forward. I'm so glad again for your time and uh, enjoy the rest of your day, whatever you have to do. Yes, for sure. You too, my friend. Ciao, ciao. Thank you. Ciao. Ciao.